Okay, welcome back everybody. Here we are back in Steph's kitchen. Hello. Hello. We didn't comment on your incredible shirt during the intro video and I feel oh, we you. should have. It's really popping in this kitchen. It's, it my, it's my TV shirt. It's your TV shirt yeah. for yeah. your many TV appearances. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so we have all of our ingredients out from the intro video. Um, if you have not got those out, you might want to pause and check back and do that now. We also have out a big pan for the pasta, a large pan for the sauce, and a little frying pan for toasting the nuts and stuff. Yeah, that's going to be for toasting the nuts and raisins and also for toasting the breadcrumbs, for frying the breadcrumbs. Ah, yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, get all that out and ready, and we are going to start with what? Well, we're going to start off by just putting some water in the pot. Very good. So, you want a large pot. Uh, and uh, basically, while we're doing everything else, that's just going to start kind of heating up. So, so we'll you, turn on. The when stove. you're making pasta, you don't boil your water in the kettle first, do you not? Sometimes, but by the time I've spent a little bit of time doing everything else, this should be hopefully ready. Yeah, and it should it's true. Be this is something point. I've started doing differently since watching my friends cook, actually, because I would always do it in the kettle. But yeah, usually you're making a sauce, always making a sauce to go with it. Um, and by the time that's ready, it has all the time to heat up on the hobs. So it is a good thing. Wow, your tap is slow running. Yep, uh, it does not have that. the best pressure. Look at that. <laughs> Look at it go. The little tap that it's like could. It's a tiny water feature. <laughs> yeah, the little tap that could. The little tap that could. It's, uh, oh, it's hey, getting Byron. there, little by little. Byron's Hi, Byron. making an appearance. Byron's okay. the entertainment for today. He's very excited. He's already been fed twice, so he's not getting any more. You can smell the fish. He's not, he's not hungry, he's just a liar. <laughs> All right. We're so. almost there. Bam! Onto the hob. It's a big pot of water. We're just going to cover that and then just let it basically boil away while we're so doing everything else. So we should say else. we are making four servings. Um, and you can either make all of the sauce um, and only do enough pasta for however many people you're feeding now. Or Seb was saying that he makes four servings of pasta as well so that he can toss it all together with the sauce and then just refrigerates the portions of pasta that you're not using, which is something I don't normally do. But yeah. you say it reheats in a pan perfectly fine. With yeah, pasta. I've had it a few times. Maybe you just add in a bit more water just yeah. to kind of rehydrate yeah. it. Okay, so right. we are going into onion prep. So. I think there's, there's been enough explanations on how to cut an onion on your channel already. There probably have been. I'm just yeah. waiting for someone to come up with a different technique. <laughs> <laughs> just smash it against the wall and it yeah. falls into perfect dice. You, just get, you, you get your ninja stars. You get your, <laughs> your cooking ninja stars. You've got your ninja stars. Who doesn't? Um, and uh, yeah, as with a lot of Mediterranean food, you don't have to worry about getting it super fine. But you are doing small dicing. Yeah, exactly. So okay. just, just you know, it can be a little bit, I think the term is rustic. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it can be a little bit rough, it's fine. Uh, so yeah, I've got two of these smaller onions. Like mm -hmm. I said, you can use maybe, if you've got a bigger one, maybe half a large onion. Nice. Um, so last time we were here, um, you did us a curry. Mm -hmm. And... This time we're doing Italian food. We talked last time about your kind of Spanish food influence, but where does the love of Italian come from? Uh, well, um, oddly enough, even though I've never lived in Italy, um, the the one passport I have is Italian. Um, <laughs> it's the only the only I'm in, the only country of which I'm a citizen. I've never really lived in. Uh, That's but, incredible. Uh, I it's just because I'm I'm Italian on my dad's side. Um, but my grandparents lived in Rome as I was growing up, and my grandmother still lives there, so... Amazing. So I would you go have there. family that you go and visit in Rome. Yeah, so I would Pretty go there nice most situation. summers when I was growing up. Uh, and um, I think, yeah, at home we always... My dad always um, made a lot of Italian food, and mm -hmm. sort of a specialty. Um, so I think I've, I've always had that in my life. Yeah. That kind of cultural that aspect of Italy. And we've also taught of all the kind of about all the regional differences and I mean with your grandparents living in Rome, I imagine there's very specific food to Rome that mm. you wouldn't really find elsewhere, right? Yeah, I mean I'm, I'm not 
not familiar with all of the various regions, but you know, I sort of know, at least with Rome, I know what's kind of typical of Rome. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I've got the various sort of the specific pizza place that I go to every time I'm in Rome. You know, there's various sort of little places I know around Don't. there. That's just killing me right now. That yeah. just sounds amazing. Yeah. Everything about it. All right, so our onion is diced up nicely. Now As we're going to go for the fennel. Now and we're got moving on to the fennel. Pretty big chunk of fennel. It is a big one. So we're just going to use about half of that. Okay. Fennel prep, I'm quite intrigued about because I'm never really sure if I'm doing it right. Um, you don't really have to worry about it too much. No. Just, yeah. Get these stems you don't need at the top. But like I said, try and save uh, the fronds because the fronds are going to be used for garnish. Nice. So I'm just yeah. going to take. I feel these fronds over here. Mm -hmm. Oh, it smells so good. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I'm quite a late convert to fennel. A few great things in culinary life that I came to quite late. Coriander was one, fennel was another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never really, I don't think I ever really cooked with fennel until I made this dish. Oh, uh, yeah. To be honest, this is still the only dish that I know <laughs> yeah. um, how to make using fennel. It's very nice with um, pork as well. Mm, I make some yeah. pork meatballs yeah. and do nice. them in a fennel and cream sauce, which is very nice. All right, yeah. so we're just gonna, we'll chop that up a little bit finer later on, these fronds, but mm -hmm. we're just gonna leave that to the side for now. And basically the fennel, we're just gonna do it like an onion, right? So. Okay, so you keep the outer, it was always the outer bits. I was wondering if you had to take the outer layers off, a bit like. I keep it in, it's fine. Yeah. No and dicing it just like an onion. Yep. Let's take these fronds to the side. I really want to take one, a little chunk and eat it. A little chunk of frond. Can I take a little, well, more than a chunk of actual fennel. Oh, but a your chunk knife of fennel. was kind of close, thank you. Mm. Yeah, it's the um, aniseedy taste that mm. always put me off. But yeah. It really works with a lot of things. And okay, so olive oil. Now this is Mediterranean cuisine. That means we are not shy with the olive oil. Mm. And when you have good quality olive oil, it's another component of the dish basically, isn't yeah. it? So and you people get, get lots in there. Really freaked out about, th I was making this for a friend actually, mm -hmm. um, the other day, because uh, I randomly ended up at her house and then I thought, we're gonna make dinner. So we made this. Nice. And I, I was like, where's your olive oil? And um, then I chucked in about this amount of olive oil mm -hmm. and she just looked terrified. Really? And she was like, that is how much olive oil I use in a week. I'm assuming she was not Italian. No. Um, so we put, what do you think, about three or four tablespoons in there? I mean, people yeah. can see. Yeah. Kind of cover the bottom of your pan, basically. Um, basically, be generous. Yeah. Be generous with the olive oil. And we're going straight um, in. The... People so, with um, the so you had that pan on a heat already, did you? Yeah. Yeah, so we've got it on like a medium. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe we'll turn it up just a tiny bit. Medium That's, high. Yeah. That's um, gonna... If you're waiting for your pan to heat up, then obviously feel free to pause and jump back in when it's heated up. And basically we're going to let that fry for about 10 minutes or so. Nice. Frying fennel is... Um, a new one for me. And the dishes that I make with it, I don't think I ever fry it. Maybe we might even whack it all the way up just to get just to get it going there a little bit quicker. Yeah. Because that after that basically well we don't have um we, we just kind of let that fry for about ten minutes or so. We've got the water that's uh getting a little bit hotter now. We might as well salt it now. Mm-hmm. This is another thing that freaks people out that Italians do. <laughs> The sheer amount of salt. The sheer amount of salt. <laughs> yeah. So the Italian method is that the water should be, well, what they, they're saying is as salty as the sea. That's what I was taught. Um, that's so what I do. generally, like people will put in, the point is to actually season the pasta, right? Yeah, We're trying exactly. to season all of this. Yeah. Um, so you don't want a pinch of salt, you want a handful of salt, mm -hmm. right? This is what you are going for, something like that. Yeah. Exactly. People freak out about this. It's fine. Trust yeah, I mean, me. so much of it is staying in the water, you know, yeah, exactly. you're, you're draining all that water away. It is just helping to flavor the final dish. And uh, we might as well, while we're at it, just while we're waiting for this to, to fry up a little bit. Oh, yeah, um, we need some wine. I 
put that in the freezer okay <laughs> to help it get to drinking temperature for us a little bit quicker that's purely what that was about so we're gonna do just a little bit of wine over here in the glass and then we're going to check in our saffron so our saffron is going to basically oh right okay it stews in the wine it stews it? in the wine for a little bit so we're putting in two, two of, these little, of these little capsules little i don't capsules. really know how saffron usually comes but if this is the standard way then i quite like a strong this i don't know if people like are opposed to a strong saffron flavor so you might only want to use one i really like it um, Can you so please describe the flavor of saffron? No. <laughs> if you've had a paella, that's what it is. I, I mean, obviously, there's lots of other things in a paella, but like, smell it. That's well, that's what a paella. Wine, well, it's going it? to smell of paella and wine. Oh right. Yep. Oh yes. I always thought it was a little bit like um, turmeric in that it didn't necessarily add. No, no, no. It adds. It adds loads of flavors. It is strong. Yeah. It, it, it's got a very strong flavor. Um, so yeah, we use these little powdery things of saffron, um, but um, if, um, if you've got strands, um, if you've got a mortar and pestle, you can grind it up and then mm -hmm. put it in the wine. If you don't, it's fine. Maybe just crumble it a little bit, but okay, you know, don't. Okay, because that's kind of more often how it comes, right, yeah. is in the little strands. So you can just put the strands slightly crumbled into the wine and it will have the yeah. same effect. It's starting to look like aperol. Let's see what else. Oh yeah, we want to make breadcrumbs, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to for you. roughly chop this uh, bread. Oops. And the addition of breadcrumbs of... is very exciting. Yeah, just as a as a garnish at the end, it works really well. A carb garnish. This is the issue with stale bread, of course. Yep. Cutting it's a nightmare. Yeah. Do you have any tips? I mean, I'm guessing not. <laughs> can you? Can you? On how to keep bread fresh? <laughs> on how to what? How to keep bread fresh um, for longer. Put it in the freezer, but that then you just get frozen bread. Yeah, because this is an endless struggle. Like we buy nice loaves of bread, but we are only two people in my household. Yeah. And um, I've tried keeping it in sort of the paper bag that it comes in. I've tried keeping it in foil, I've tried keeping it in plastic, which just makes it go moist and moldy. Yeah. Um, I'm yet to find a good way. Maybe a bread bin is the answer. I'm so worried you're gonna cut your yeah. fingers right now. Bring, bring this video to a premature end. Yeah, <laughs> please be careful. <laughs> All right, that's getting crummy. If you want to spare yourself the trouble and you just have pre-made breadcrumbs, mm -hmm. it is a bit quicker. But to be honest, everything else is already kind of ready, more or less. I mean, well, that's it. It's just a matter of like toasting the other things, isn't it? Really. Yeah. Um, George's way of making breadcrumbs involved cutting slices of bread, toasting them, and then um, putting them in a blender. So if that people have those, have that equipment to hand, that might be something you want to do. But I also feel like it doesn't matter if it's not really fine crumbs, right? Yeah. It can just no, it be sort of too much. You can just chunky have, bread topping. Yeah. Chunky bread topping. There's nothing wrong with that. So okay. where is it that you tend to find your recipes? Do you have favorite websites? Do you use actual books? Um, it's just various different. I, th I think uh, a fair bit on YouTube, actually. Okay, yeah. yeah pretty See, much. I just, despite having a YouTube channel, I just don't use YouTube at all. <laughs> so I don't understand, um, yeah, the full... I think, yeah, a lot of learning to cook I just did on YouTube. Um, just looking up, you know, if there was if there was anything that interested me, you know, mm. something nice that I ate somewhere, and I was like, how do I do that? Yeah. Um, I just looked it up on YouTube, and there's, you know, it's a really good resource to learn virtually everything. It's replaced our teachers now, YouTube, because <laughs> anything you want to learn, it's so on good. There. All right, so we YouTube got some more. bit of chunky bread. Why do I? What do I use YouTube for? No, no, I said I, I've got to use YouTube more. Mm. 
I don't know half of its talents. Yeah, and then the algorithms will present you the stuff that you're more interested in. Uh, yes, and then the uh, they'll suggest that you join Flat Earth, the Flat Earth Society. <laughs> Just a bonus, really. Then you'll become increasingly radicalized. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. There's no problems. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, no. Yeah. We lost I the fennel. I got it on camera. Nah, it's only a little bit. It's only a teeny bit. I'll pick up the bits that are on the countertop. So basically what happens in this situation, we sweep it up and then we put it <laughs> Oh, my God. No, we don't do that. You fooled me for a second. All right. So this is starting to look real nice and soft. So that's pretty much... Done. That's nice and soft. Mm -hmm. So basically, at this point, we're going to check in everything else. Um, let's see. Where's our anchovy? So we're going to go in with the anchovy. And see if I can get two little... fillets, did you say? Two or three? Yeah, let's do three. Let's Why not? Do three. Okay, so two anchovy lovers here. Uh, let's see. We're going to throw in our saffrony wine. Ooh, yes. And that's going to give it an amazing color as saffron wow. will do. So probably whenever you add wine, we that's going to be left to cook off a little also, bit. Also, yeah, we can add in the pasta as well. Our water is boiling now. It is. That's like a and I'm just going to go in with all of this. All of it? All of it. Nice. What do you count as a portion of pasta then? Uh, I think that it depends on the sauce you're having it right. with. It's like a really, really cheesy sauce or something quite heavy. 100 grams per person is fine. Okay. If it's something a little bit lighter, maybe 150. It's good to know. I never really know. One thing you realize when you go to Italy, because people are like, how do Italians eat all these many carbs and they're not really that fat? Mm -hmm. Once you go to Italy, you realize they don't have the giant portions of pasta that That's people it, have in it? the UK. Yeah. Like, you eat a meal of pasta in Italy, and you're almost not really that full, generally. You're just kind of like, oh, that was a good, like, I'm satisfied. Yeah. Because it's also one of the primeri. Mm. Would you like to finish Yeah, that? I mean, traditionally. Primi piatti. <laughs> so it's not even the main meal, generally, is it? Yeah, I mean, like, it's not like everyone's having, I mean, the supposedly, like, traditional Italian meal is, like, antipasti. Yeah. Then pasta. Yeah. Then meat or fish then dessert, then espresso. Um, oh, I feel full just hearing Yeah, that. like this is not, this is not something people do all the time. Yeah. Like maybe if there's like a big, I don't know, family dinner or celebration or something, they mm -hmm. might do that. But like, you know, your typical office worker in Milan is not taking two hours for lunch. Well, I feel like this is false advertising. That was uh, <laughs> my entire impression of Italy. So the wine is probably cooked off by so now. It's got a we'll really go nice color. With the chili flakes. And you put one a pinch, two pinches. Yeah, a couple of pinches. A couple of pinches. Uh, to taste. A bit of salt and pepper. That was 14 turns of pepper. Precisely 14 <laughs> turns. Don't do any more or any less. And this like is going to be a teaspoon, long. half a teaspoon. Yeah. You don't need to salt it too much because there's already salty pasta coming salty in. Salty pasta, yeah. Even in a pan that big, it's hard to get your spaghetti length pasta into the water. And oh, that's smelling see. amazing. Mm. We're going to. This is the pasta is now going to take um, maybe around seven minutes or so once it's all in there. Okay, um, even that kind of you fat wanted, spaghetti to that short amount you of You wanted well you don't want to have it fully cooked. Yeah. Okay. Um, so basically as you do quite often with Italian foods, at the end you're gonna cook the sauce and the pasta together. Right, okay. Um, so basically you want it to be almost cooked mm -hmm. um, so that then they're going to be kind of for another couple of minutes intermingling. Yeah. We've done salt and pepper. That's we can good. fry up some raisins and some pine nuts. Oh, yes. We'll do the raisins first just so that they start to get that blackened. This actually used to be a topping, you know, all of my oh wait a minute. So we're putting in a handful of raisins into just a dry pan, there's no yeah. oil in that at all. And we've put it already on a high heat? Yeah. Okay. 
and you'll just see basically the skins will start to pop a little bit. Yeah. Um, so a lot of my Italian food references hark back to Pizza Express, <laughs> which of course is as authentic as you can get. But they had a pizza called the Veneziana that had a pine nut and raisin topping. Pine nut, raisin, caper and anchovy. And as a teenager, I always thought, ugh, disgusting. Who would order such a strange pizza? And then it later on became my favorite one. It's such a good combination. It's that sweetness and saltiness that is just mm, a yeah. very good combination. Yeah, and with um, here with the anchovies, the, it's just, yeah, it's a surprising ingredient. Even if you don't like raisins, just trust me, add it. I've made yeah. it with a friend who doesn't really like raisins yeah. and she didn't really, like, they didn't bother her at mm -hmm. all in this dish. It just balances out the sweetness with the saltiness of yeah. the, and it just provides this contrast, which is really interesting. So. Yappy dog is back. What you been yapping at? Your ears folded over. And as you can see, for the people that are afraid of anchovies, if you look in that pan, there is no anchovy to be seen anywhere. Anchovy anywhere. be gone. Yeah. But my goodness, can you smell it? Oh, yeah. it smells incredible. So yeah, I know this dish obviously is going to um, exclude our vegans and vegetarians in the group, but um, I know a lot of people that make an exception for fish. Mm -hmm. So um, hopefully it's not too exclusive. And if so, and you're craving a pasta dish this week, just go back and cook one of the many delicious veggie and vegan dishes we've done the last few weeks. Exactly, they, they have enough. They have plenty. Right, we've got some tongs out, which is exciting. What are we going to be doing with those? Uh, we're just going to be... I keep dropping everything. <laughs> um, just going to be using that for Oh, getting the, into the pasta. Yeah, because I'm not going to bother draining the pasta, actually. Ah, and what you can do now, because you want to keep the sauce actually quite wet. Mm -hmm. So every now and then you can chuck in ah, okay. a little bit of pasta water. Nice. So that's Get some done. starchy water in there. Exactly. So, and also that's going to be um, the salt in there again is going to be seasoning yeah. the sauce. And so that's going to kind of add a little bit of a creaminess yeah. uh, to the sauce, just getting that pasta water in it. Beautiful. It's done a lot in Italian cuisine, like, um, you know, for example, there's the sort of classic one, which is the carbonara, which yeah. uh, in other restaurants outside of Italy, or perhaps bad ones in Italy, they put cream in it. Should not have any cream, should it? Whereas Italians don't, they just use the pasta water mm -hmm. to, the starchiness of the pasta water to create that kind of creamy effect. With the egg, I guess, together they make that okay so those are starting to kind of pop out of their skin a little bit if you see that they're kind of changing color yeah and i think at this point we like can add can in some pine nuts smelling them as well so you kind of go in with the same Big amount of pine nuts yeah. to raisins yeah why not more Ooh, always more why pine not nuts. always more? oh wow because the pine nuts are going to toast very quickly yeah. actually you can see that they're pretty much already they toasted Although I always like my, I like to get my pine nuts quite charred. But I guess that's personal preference. Yeah. This is just so nice because it's just so different to, because I cook so many pasta dishes and yeah. I struggle to come across a pasta dish that's like, oh wow, that's so different. This is, the, yeah, make. this is really good to, this is a pasta dish that um, you don't, you don't even really see it in Italy. Um, mm. Like I don't, I don't, I don't remember ever seeing this in a restaurant in Rome. Remind me how you came across it. You said you were going to Sicily. No, a friend of mine was going to Sicily. Ah, right. Okay. And so I was telling her I was a little bit jealous because she gets to eat lots of food. Yeah. And then she sort of asked, "Well, what even is Sicilian food?" Of course, there's arancini. Mm hmm But then we kind of did a little bit of research, and we found this. So you did find this as an actual Sicilian dish. Can yes. you remember what yes. it's called? Pasta con le sarde. Le sardine. Le sarde, the sardines. Uh -huh. So it's pasta with the sardines, literally. It's not a very creative name. <laughs> Especially when there's so much other stuff. That so goes much into other stuff. It. So yeah, you can, you can really see the raisins. Look at how much they've popped. Oh, yeah. Right? You see that? Oh, wow. And like just some completely of them change color. Really swollen up into actual orbs. That's yep. amazing. And our pine nuts are nice and charred. Tasting. And now we can add that in. Oh, yum. And we can use this same pan. To toast our bread. To toast our bread. So have you turned it down slightly or left it on a high heat? 
Um, yeah, I turned it down slightly. Just slightly. And we're putting more of that delicious of course, olive, olive oil. oil. Always olive oil. About two tablespoons, I would say. Oh yeah. <laughs> Fried bread topping. You just can never go wrong. You miss the bit. And let's see, how is this pasta doing? So the sardines I've noticed haven't gone in yet. When do they, they go in? They go in at the end. Okay. They they don't need to go. Mm. I mean, mm. this is pretty much ready to go in now. Amazing. Um, if you were doing the, the traditional way, mm -hmm. um, the traditional way you would you would have fresh sardines. Um, yeah. So you would need to cook those with the pasta. Yeah. And you'd need to peel them and debone them and all that kind of stuff. Okay. I've never had it that way. One day I'll go to Sicily maybe and I'll try it that way. So we are currently adding the pasta with tongs straight from the bowl. Straight in. into the sauce pan. And we drop more. We're putting things. some on the floor <laughs> because that's just frankly way too much food for that pan. <laughs> but Seb is going in regardless. He will not be beat. Oh, wow. It's half a kilo. <laughs> they look like this. But because the sauce swim. is fairly light, yeah. you can comfortably, you know. You can comfortably put so much pasta in the pan. Eat 200 grams of this pasta. Yeah. They look it's like just, those pool um, noodles. Our bread is frying very nicely. And basically, and now at this point we're going to add in, yeah, this can be a little bit annoying, <laughs> yeah. but mix it in as best you can. Usually you have to kind of remember when you're serving it up. I still haven't found a way to make all of the food at the bottom come to the top, so I yeah. still have to make sure to scrape spoon the, it out. spoon out the bottom so that I get all the good stuff. Mm -hmm. And now, sardines. Right. With even more olive oil, because they have olive oil in them. Incredible. Always more olive oil. <laughs> Just basically chuck them right in with the olive oil. Wow. And you can mash them up a little bit. Do you mash yours up? Yeah. I mean, there's certainly an argument for... Olive oil? No, <laughs> there's always an argument for olive oil. For draining your pasta so that you can mix it all up in that massive pot. <laughs> rather than that frying pan. Nah. Nah, what's the fun in that? This way the, the sauce and the pasta get to know each other before they before they hit your plate. Oh, I like that, get to know each other. Yep. They get personally acquainted. <laughs> they, get, they get acquainted. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just kind of breaking up that sardine a little mm -hmm. bit with the tongs. I'm gonna take this other bit of pasta. We've made a whole dish bin. on the floor in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised Byron's not all over it. Especially with the smell of sardines. Yeah. Right? So the tongs are proving supremely useful in this dish. Yeah, and if you sort of see, it is quite, there's yeah. a fair bit of liquid in there. You know, when I was bringing in the pasta. Yeah, it brings in, especially it brings in the liquid. got a hole down the middle, I imagine. Eight, there goes another bit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll end up with half the amount of pasta. Yeah. Half the amount of pasta is for it's for the, the floor gods. Mm -hmm. It's for Hades. Johnny also made an entire floor taco when he was nice. doing his, so I think it's an offering. And so I think we can pretty much serve that up now. So it's it ends up quite quick dish. a thin coating over the pasta, right? But I imagine because it's so intensely flavorful with the anchovies and the sardines. Well, there's, there's a fair bit of stuff in there that is just kind of at the bottom, yeah. which we're going to just dig out. And probably throw more of it on the floor as we Excellent. do so. Excellent. Always, wait. always remember to throw the pasta on the floor. <laughs> if in doubt, chuck it on the floor. I think that bread is looking all right. Looking great. But it can fry up a little tiny bit more. Let's see. This is going to be a new record. We're not even at half an hour, so this is incredible. It's a really quick dish. Yeah. It's People haven't needed to take any time to cook. It's generally fairly cheap, except for saffron and pine nuts. Yeah, I would say... It's, I don't know. It, a bit of a treat dish, but very easy to come by the ingredients. It cooks pretty 
quickly. Yeah. It goes straight onto the floor <laughs> where you want it. <laughs> All positives. Uh, let's see. I'm so excited just about this new spaghetti that I've never tried before. Oh, I love a bucatini. 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 Yeah, um, just hollow spaghetti. It's I mean, quite what a great idea. It all gets up in there. More over here. Let's see, let's see. Let's just get some pasta out of that pan so that then we can dig out the stuff at the bottom. Yes. So yeah, you can start by doing your pasta serving. Woo -hoo -hoo. Get a little extra fried. This is a very professional cooking show. Oh, absolutely. That's what we aim for. Okay, now there's there's the good stuff there's hiding the under good there. Stuff. Wow. Make sure you get lots of the good stuff. Is it liquid enough that you would want to use a spoon or is it really all coming out well with a slotted spatula? Yeah, it's fine with the yeah. spatula, I think. Let's do more of the good stuff around here. And let's also move that put on some you? of that on here. Oh yeah. We can do a plate swap if you want. Oh, we've got a bridge. A little bit more pasta here, why not? <laughs> this is so decadent somehow. Um, I keep forgetting there's bread to go on the top as well. Yeah, and fennel fronds. <gasps> of course. Oh, well, that's going to make it look just beautiful. Yeah, it actually, if you know how to present, which I don't really. <laughs> I think it looks gorgeous already, to be honest. A uh, big bowl of pasta when you can see all of the ingredient components. That's a winner in my books. Okay, now, fried bread on top. Because why not? Because why not? Why not top your carbs with more, <laughs> with more carbs? <laughs> The rest of the sauce is so light and healthy, it's like, yeah. Beautiful. And finally, and fronds. let's just chop that up a little bit. And that's just going to add quite a bit of flavor, actually, and also yeah. just give it this nice, nice bit of green fresh spark right at the end. Mm -hmm. Bit of vibrant. Oh yeah, wow. Oh, look at that. That Incredible. is Sicilian <gasps> saffron, sardine, fennel, raisin, pine nut, chili flake. Oh yes, get in my belly. Did I forget anything? Anchovy. Anchovy. Oh my goodness. And it's in under 35 minutes that is an absolute dish. record um thank you so so much i am so excited this is just my dream food um so yeah like i said in the intro video uh we're going to be taking a week's break now so we'll see you in two weeks for more delicious dishes maybe use this time to try out some ones that you haven't cooked yet guten appetit hope this one comes out so delicious and see you in a few weeks thanks again seb bye bye